So for today's video, I'm going to share with you nine things that I found very useful when deciding what kind of computer for bird and wildlife photographers. Hello, I'm Tim An Lee, a wildlife photographer. Currently, I am a invited judge for bird photographer of the year, nature photographer of the year, and also share the view for bird and wildlife photographers. We have to go out. Right? We sometimes have to travel long distance to get our shots. Per purpose of a computer as what I th thought before was really just to back up the photos right as long as it's lightweight and it has two USB-C parts where I can put on my SSD drives into it then I'm fine so that was my original thinking about laptops so for many years I was using a MacBook Air 13 inch very lightweight many years ago I went to a very remote place for polar bear pho photography in the Canadian Arctic. So what surprised me was that all these professional photographers were using a 15-inch MacBook Pro. And I was having a 13-inch and I thought, like, why these people are bringing this such heavy computer? And then it dawned on me. So when we take photos, we want to make sure that the lens, the cameras are operating perfectly where we get very sharp photos, right? So every evening when we review our photos, we want to look at the photos and see if the eyes of the animals or the birds are super sharp. Turn out that a 15 inch computer is a lot bigger than a 13 inch. And so in order to see the sharpness, it makes a huge difference. For example, I don't have a 13, 13 inch laptop, uh, but this one is a 12.9 uh, inch iPad Pro, right? The 13 inch uh, MacBook Pro is gonna be probably a little bit bigger than this one. And this one is my 16 inch MacBook Pro. So if you just put them together, so you see that there's a huge size difference right here. With a bigger screen, you can see an image much better. And number two, what I was surprised is that they were nonstop doing editing on the photos. And I thought, like, why don't you just wait at home to do it? Turn out all these pros, they were playing with the composition of the photos. I thought, oh, that was right. Because every time they review the photos, they will think about new ideas so that they can apply the next day when they see the animals again and try this and try that. And for me, with a 13-inch computer with a very slow processor. Even opening Lightroom takes forever. <laughs> and not to mention about Photoshop. So for me, it was such a pain to even edit the photos. So these two are very important in terms of selecting a laptop that I didn't know before. I remember one year I was traveling remotely. I received an email from a lady and she said, hey, we are interested in licensing one of your photos. Are you interested? At the time I was really in the remote and I barely have time to check email. So I didn't even respond to it, but the lady sent me quite a few emails. I don't even know if it's legit at the time. So I didn't even respond. But finally I said, do you have a budget about how you want to license that one photo? And then she said, we couldn't offer you a lot of money money but our initial offer to you is eight thousand dollars <laughs> and i said okay done so they wanted me to send them a photo of a mountain goat that i took many years ago and that will be another video that i'm going to share with you so they asked me to pick the photo however i didn't even have the photo in my computer so what i need to do is to go back onto the cloud storage so one recommendation is you always store some of your most critical files in the cloud so that you can download it when you're in the field so i need to to get that file in so that comes to number three very important thing is when you are in the remote location it is very difficult to get signals always get the newest computer with the best wi-fi capability because with that when you are sitting with a few people who have a slower wi-fi in their computer you can always grab all the bandwidth uh, i still remember many years ago when i was in a remote lodge there was a participant in the tour that he had all these um, crazy antennas and stuff and he would connect it to his laptop just to steal all the bandwidth from the lodge so that he can do do stuff and uh, and then everybody were moving around so that they can find the best spots for the best reception 
exception. So just imagine if you have the newest 16 inch MacBook Pro, then you get all the signals in and nobody can compete with you on that. So in terms of RAM, I would max it out. So my MacBook Pro has 64 gigabyte of RAM and, and at home I have a Mac Studio, which has 128 gigabyte. After the MacBook Air, I changed to a MacBook Pro 15 inch, but it was the 2017 model. So I, that computer was a nightmare, the one with the touch bar. So that computer crashed so many times for me. I had to pay 1500 bucks just to fix it. So can you imagine when the computer just died? then you, you can back up your files, you can check your files, and it just basically would ruin the whole creative process. And we don't want that. So I would definitely go for the newest computer, which is the most reliable, newer, better. So I'll give you an example. Before, when I was using the Topax Denoise and those Nick filter and those kind of stuff, when I have to open it, even when I have to open Photoshop, it would take 10, 15 seconds to even load the application. And when I want to denoise the image, it will go for a few minutes for my old computer, the 2017 MacBook Pro or even my iMac Pro which cost me like nine grand, but it's just useless. Anyways, but the M1 Max was just insane. For Topax Denoise, for the raw image, it takes probably less than five seconds to do that. If you have 4K slow motion video, I remember back then when I had the old computer, even rendering a file for five minutes, it would take me 40 minutes to render it. But now my laptop with the M1 Max takes probably less than like a minute. To, to get the video rendered. So I save 40 times of my time. If money can buy time, I will pay any money to buy it because there is nothing more important than our time. So imagine sitting there waiting for the rendering, waiting for the Topax Denoise, but now it's almost instant. So it really adds up. Like for one year of editing, it, it just saves us so much more time so that we can watch Netflix and do nothing else. <laughs> but anyways, uh, or watch YouTube. <laughs> so we can just save a lot. Of, oh no, we can go to uh, a lot more trips and then uh, spend quality time with our loved ones. So this is very important. The new Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop can use GPU. You don't need to go for the highest spec GPU if you're only doing photo editing. If you're doing video editing, then definitely just max out your GPU. So I just max out everything. I think my 16 inch a MacBook Pro has the 10 core, the 64 gigabyte RAM and the best GPU and only four terabyte of SSD. So you may say, Tin Man, why do you need so much SSD uh, internal hard drive? We have all these uh, external SSD drives anyways. Four terabytes is not too expensive these days, right? <clears throat> So why don't we just get a 512 gigabyte SSD and you can save a lot of money. I had the 512 gigabyte hard drive for my computer before. Sometimes when you have to render a file and you forgot to save all the files onto an external hard drive, it, it would be written into your internal drive. And in case you only have 512 gigabyte, it can become a disaster if the space is used up. And when I was in Kenya last year, I just upgraded to the newest version of Lightroom. The catalog took up so much space. Just building up one catalog from a few days of photos, it used up my whole computer storage. So having a four terabyte drive will give you a lot of freedom. Plus, if you're going to places like Alaska or Kenya and there is some special animal sighting or if there is some extra space available for the next few days and you can stay for maybe a week more then if you you didn't bring enough external hard drive you, you can't really buy external hard drive in remote places so if you are completely running out of external hard drives you with that four terabyte internal it can still save you and even though it is like eight hundred dollars more but i think uh, that is almost like a uh, security that <laughs> can protect you from this the cpu is really important and the ram because we want to be able to edit the files you don't need to do a lot of intense editing but in case there is some print sales request or for example if you are submitting to photo contest and then they say hey like you just got into the final round and now we need you to send in the raw file and the high resolution TIFF file and you don't even have enough 
capability to edit those files and you may lose the chance to win the award. Most of these photo contests are very strict. Even when you send them an email saying that, hey, I'm uh, traveling and I'll be late for one day. Is it okay if I send these files to you one day later? And they'll say no. So you may lose the chance of a lifetime when you have those opportunities. When I travel, I usually have my Urban Disguise Think Tank messenger bag or this one. This one is the Rural Gear Chobi messenger bag. So this one is very important when you're traveling because I always carry my backpack and then I have this one disguised as my computer bag. But actually this bag can hold probably two camera bodies and a 70 to 200 lens and a bunch of external hard drives and stuff. So that really helps. So what I do is, so there's a open space. If you can see it here. So you just basically laptop in here and then just sip it up and you're good to go good stuff right so that's how i travel with my laptop so another question is hey tin man i don't even use computer anymore i only bring my ipad pro for my transfer because these days you can use the usb-c drive part of the ipad pro like this one to connect to the hub where you can put in two external hard drive to to copy the files when i do photo editing and when I drag the files and stuff, I am still more, much more comfortable with a uh, mouse. I actually bring my mouse and mouse pad with my computer when I do editing because I just can not use my finger to, to do all this brush and stuff. <laughs> and for the iPad, it's still 12.9 inch. I still think a 16 inch is a lot better. So that is my tips in terms of my laptop. And, and a lot of people, they don't even own a desktop anymore. What they do is they just bring their laptop home and then they just put it on a station and then it will attach to the monitor and do that. And that that is uh, totally fine. But for me, I just have to admit that I'm a, I shouldn't say I'm a shopaholic. I just have, I'm, I'm, I have trauma. After the 2017 MacBook Pro trauma and after realizing how much faster a MacBook Pro M1 Max is in terms of editing files and stuff. I just got so addicted to speed, like need for speed. So when the Max Studio came out, I just bought it and I maxed it out 128 gigabyte of RAM. And, um, and then they have that new M1 Max thing stacking to M1, whatever trips on there. So it actually has a huge difference between the Max Studio and the 16 inch MacBook Pro. I went to Hong Kong for almost two months and I was doing a lot of editing with the laptop and also video editing. So when I was using the Final Cut Pro, just very basic editing, not even fancy. It was just like a 15 minute YouTube video of me talking in the camera with some B-rolls and stuff. And it crashed a few times. And when I'm doing this editing, sometimes it will be frozen for a few seconds. However, it had never happened on the Mac Studio. So I think the, the M1 Max chip is faster for the Mac Studio, but also is the RAM, the 128 gigabyte of RAM makes a huge difference compared to the 64 gigabyte. So right now for my desktop, this is an Apple display, the, the new one, the 27 inch one. I have two of them and setting up is very, really easy. I just put both and attach to the Mac Studio and boom, I can drag and drop and do all these th things. And it's awesome because I can watch YouTube and Netflix on one monitor and do editing on the other one to save my precious time. So that is my setup. And, and right now I just feel this joy, like, before that, like editing a photo or editing a video is painful to me because of all the lag, right? Because everything is frozen and then you have to cross your finger and say like, don't freeze on me, please. And then you keep on checking if you have to force quit the app. Th those were the old days. And these days I'm just so confident that it, it, everything is smooth. So the joy it brings me is worth the ticket. For talking about the, the price, the MacBook Pro is, if you max everything out except the external hard drive, it's gonna run you to about, not about, I, I actually just checked for you guys is four thousand eight hundred and ninety nine dollars oh god and then plus tax is over five grand plus apple care then over five thousand dollars so it is very expensive however if i didn't have that powerful computer then i would have lost that eight thousand dollars licensing and there were quite a few times when i w was having requests for print sales at twelve thousand twelve hundred so i wish someday it would be twelve thousand but twelve hundred bucks and, and stuff like that so here and there it just adds up if spending a little bit extra money can buy you a peace of mind and also save you tons of time and all these frustrations i think 
it is worth it. I still have to eat a lot of instant ramen to save the money, but I would rather spend the money on the critical thing like good computer. When you go to a trip, you can lose your toothbrush, which happened to one of my roommates. <laughs> and he was depressed because for 10 days, we are in a remote lodge. And imagine if you have to use your fingers to uh, to brush your teeth, where he went eventually find it anyways. So you can lose your toothbrush, you can lose your tripod, you can lose your, all your clothes, your underwear, but nothing is more important than the images that you took. So a good laptop can really protect you from having this kind of disaster. So that will be it. Oh, yes. So I am also having a six months mentorship program together with very famous photographer and my good friend Federico Vervanici, who was the grand prize winner for Nature's Best. So we are planning to have a six months uh, mentorship program plus on location training. So if you are very serious about transforming your photography, definitely shoot me an email, timanly at gmail.com. Okay. All right. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>